Windows 10 and by extension Windows 11 comes with many items of pre-installed software and utilities that have become synonymous with the operating system. However, since they became popular, a flurry of third-party and aftermarket or open source software alternatives have become available. This includes alternative apps for productivity, education and entertainment that are so very good they equal and even surpass the functionality of usefulness of the default Windows programs. So much so that the power users install them immediately, they install a fresh Windows system because, well, they can't be without them. In this video we take a light-hearted romp through some of the superior alternatives for pre-installed Windows software and utilities. Let's get to it. Notepad++ The humble Notepad app, which has been on Windows since almost the beginning, is often overshadowed by its big brother, Microsoft Word mainly due to the limitations of Notepad rather than the excellence of Word. It's entirely possible, of course, that Microsoft deliberately kneecapped Notepad so that it wouldn't pose a threat to Word's adoption rate amongst new users. If you have an expensive Word processor product, then why would you give away a viable alternative? But in my opinion, Notepad wasn't ever really meant to be a competitor to Word, instead being an app that allows users to quickly jot down notes, input text distraction-free, or for coding using plain text files. While Notepad is often forgotten, a far superior third-party version, Notepad++, has set its sights on redeeming the Notepad name, or at the very least, providing a more full-featured text editing alternative. Notepad++ is an open-source and feature-rich Notepad alternative. It supports more than 50 programming and scripting languages, making it a powerful tool for hard-bitten coders. It's also a good tool to learn on, as it knows what code looks like and highlights it to help organise your view. At a glance, you can see all the data and all the commands. Additionally, Notepad++ has a number of auto-completion features and keyboard shortcuts to help make coding quicker and easier. Furthermore, the app works with macros and plugins that expand the functionality of the app. Finally, Notepad++ is supposedly environmentally friendly. Apparently, the program is written in C++ and uses pure Win32 API and STL, which optimizes the performance and allows it to run light. Notepad++ uses less resources, resulting in reduced power consumption, or so they say. Personally, I just like that it's a good solid text editor, which makes coding easier. And it's free, which is my favourite price. ShareX ShareX is not the most attractive program on this list, but once you get used to it, it's a powerful tool. Windows users have two options when it comes to screen capture. The print screen button, always handy, and the snipping tool. While the print screen button is quick, it takes a snapshot of your entire screen as a copy, which you then have to paste somewhere, requiring the use of an image editor to paste in and crop what you need. Snipping tool mitigates some of these problems by allowing you to capture specific parts of the screen by drawing a box with a crosshair. Now, all this is pretty good, although A, the app is fairly limited or basic, and B, it's about to be revamped at the time of writing, so who knows what it's going to be like or where it's going. ShareX offers a good solid alternative, however, a wide variety of screen capture options, including scrolling capture to grab bits of the screen you need to scroll to see. In addition, you can set a timer to delay capture and many other little tricks like performing optical character recognition or OCR to turn images of text into machine encoded text that can be edited. In addition to image capture, ShareX also gives the users the ability to record their screen as a video or a GIF. Finally, ShareX gives users a wealth of sharing options, including sending to a variety of cloud services, image hosting sites, and even social media directly. WizTree Managing storage space on your Windows PC ranks right up there with your favourite jobs, like cleaning out the garbage or taking out the recycling. It's banal, it's boring, but it has to be done. A necessary evil. While regular maintenance like disk defragging is largely a thing of the past, unless you're still running Windows XP, you savage, it's still possible even with the brave new world of Windows 10 to be confronted with dwindling storage space. With storage drives becoming larger and digital files exponentially increasing in bulk, it seems like there can never be enough gigabytes to store all your digital wares. Too much is never enough. In the past, figuring out how to trim the fat on your PC system drives has been a daunting process. You could conduct a time-consuming manual search-and-destroy mission, picking out all the stuff you no longer need by hand, or you could run a desk space analyzer from the command line. Okay, so neither of these options are particularly appealing. Thankfully, WizTree can help you figure out what's eating up disk space in no time. It can scan large NTFS drives in seconds and present its findings in an easy-to-navigate graphical list that features the largest files and folders at the top and smaller files on the bottom. 
Which tree is incredibly useful for zeroing in on large forgotten files that are hogging precious disk space. Less seek and destroy and more fire and forget. This truly is the nuclear option. Bulk Crap Uninstaller. I love that name. Once you've used WizTree to analyse what's taking up your space on your PC, you'll want to reclaim some of that disk space. Sure, you can manually hunt for files and zap them to the recycle bin, and can always use the Add Remove Programs utility on Windows to give programs you've installed the boot. See my previous comment about recycling. But what about all the other leftover junk files they leave behind? The bloatware that seems impossible to uninstall, and the installer packages and other miscellaneous leftovers that you've forgotten about. You know it's there, you just can't quite see it. Fortunately for everyone concerned, Bulk Crap Uninstaller has never met a rogue file it couldn't scrub. This allows users of all experience levels to zap unwanted files from this system for good and free up storage space forever. Well, until you fill it up again. Bulk Crap Uninstaller can easily be used by anyone, beginners and experts alike, as while it has basic features for beginners, it has a ton of hidden depths, features aimed at more advanced users. Everything. The Windows file search tool is painfully slow and woefully inaccurate. Everything remedies both of these problems, providing lightning fast indexing and searching. This allows users to zero in on specific files quickly and easily. Additionally, the Everything interface is simple and clean, making it very, very easy to use. Furthermore, Everything is a tiny, light program that uses minimal system resources. It achieves this by creating an index of every file on all NTFS and ReFS volumes the first time it is launched. Everything then continually updates that index over time, resulting in much faster and more efficient performance in future searches. Of course, everything is not the only choice when it comes to alternative file explorer utilities, and we have a link to some of those in the description. Display Fusion Open Windows Display Settings to look for something, a control to a part of Windows that you'd like to access, and you'll probably be disappointed by the bare bones options. This is especially true if you use multiple monitors and want to customise how the displays look and feel. Display Fusion fixes all that and allows you to tweak everything to your specifications. Configuring things like multiple toolbars, various wallpapers and keyboard shortcuts is simple and easy with Display Fusion. Display Fusion has a free version and a more feature-rich paid version. The pro version has multiple license options with the cheapest coming in at $29 and of course you can compare the functionality of each version before deciding which one is best for you. VLC VLC Media Player is one of the more well-known third-party applications, and for good reason. It is in fact the first thing I personally add to a new install. This jack-of-all-trades video player can play virtually any file you throw at it and is a must-have for anyone who consumes a lot of media on their computer. It also has a nice line in conversions for popular new formats into much more portable old formats. Of course, Windows 10 comes with an embarrassment of players. Windows Media Player, Groove Music Player and Movies and TV app. Why so many options? I just don't know. Perhaps they just can't be bothered to find out which one people like. I can save them a bit of time here. None of them. Keep things simpler by replacing all of these rubbish players with VLC. If streamlining your options still hasn't entirely convinced you, consider the fact that HEVC, or X265 Video Playback, is by default disabled behind a paywall in Windows 10. Why open your wallet when you can use VLC for free? A vast antivirus. Firstly, let me say I love pirate talk when talking about viruses and malware, just to get that out of the way. Anyway, Windows 10 comes with a built-in malware detector called Microsoft Defender Antivirus. The general consensus, and we've said this multiple times on the blog, is that Microsoft Defender delivers solid basic protection for the average user's PC. Defender boasts real-time protection to help users detect malware and can manually scan specific directories or files. So if it's so good, why bother making a switch? Well, Avast Antivirus is a security industry veteran. It offers a range of products, including paid and free options. Comparing a paid product with something available at no cost like Microsoft Defender is a bit unfair, but the free version of Avast Antivirus actually gets higher marks in all tests when it comes to identifying malware. This makes Avast edge out Defender in our book. Paint.net I'm confused. It's not 1995. I checked. It's the 21st century. Doc Brown and Marty McFly country. So why the heck hasn't Microsoft killed Paint? Granted, in recent years it has been updated a little to add some functionality, but there's really no reason to use it when Paint.net exists. Okay, there's no reason to use it at all. It's basic. I mean, really, really basic. Absolute torture. 
But hey, Paint.net was originally envisioned as a replacement for Microsoft Paint and has emerged as a fully featured image editor that focuses on simplicity and ease of use. It has a number of tools at its disposal, allowing users to conduct various edits and manipulations similar to that of a more complex application like Photoshop, Corel Paint or GIMP. I like its simplicity and speed, especially for less intense graphic jobs. Speed Crunch The lowly calculator is one of the more overlooked applications. Why should anyone pay attention? It's like paint, old-fashioned, basic and very boring. And besides, you have a calculator on your phone, am I right? So yeah, chances are if you're not an accountant or a student, you don't probably give the calculator very much thought. However, if you are a mathematician, scientist, or someone works with complex mathematical formulae, you probably need a calculator or at least pine for something with a little bit more oomph. Fortunately, you knew this was coming. There is a more powerful calculator app out there, and it is free and open source. SpeedCrunch is a precise scientific calculator that can be used to solve complex functions. Users can define their own functions in addition to over 80 built-in mathematical functions. Furthermore, SpeedCrunch can perform hulking great calculations with up to 50 digits, using complex numbers, unit conversions, and lots more. It's a pro tool. In a fight with standard Windows Calculator versus SpeedCrunch, I back the Hulk. HWinfo HWinfo, and it is pronounced HWinfo and not Huinfo as far as I know, is a program that allows users to view information about their PC's hardware. It's a comprehensive tool that compiles information into an easy to read tree list broken down into categories such as CPU, motherboard, memory, drives, and more. In addition to identifying things like the model number of your motherboard or RAM speed, HWinfo also provides real time diagnostics such as the temperature of your CPU or hard drive. HWinfo can also compile this data into a full report that can be exported out of the program. LibreOffice This one is a bit of a cheat since Microsoft Office is not pre-installed with Windows devices, but I think we can agree that a lot of people plump for Microsoft Office as a default instead of shopping around for cheaper options. And as it turns out, Microsoft charges a stinking fortune for its widely used suite of productivity software, even shifting to a subscription-based model called Office 365 in the recent past. This requires users to pay a license fee every year if they want to continue using the software, which, you know, sucks. Fortunately, we don't have to pay a cent to compose a Word document or do some data entry with a spreadsheet. LibreOffice is totally open source and free. Don't think free equates to crap, because on the contrary, LibreOffice is a full-featured productivity suite, having work-alike alternatives to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and even Access. The best part is LibreOffice is fully file compatible with its Microsoft equivalents. Additionally, if you don't need a full Office suite, there are a number of alternatives for Microsoft Visio as well as Microsoft OneNote. Links to all that in the description. Process Explorer. Okay, this one's a little bit boring, but you'll be glad of it when you need it. When most PC users run into a problem with Windows, their first reaction is to hit Control out delete and fire up Task Manager. Here users can kill certain programs and processes in the hope of clearing whatever blockage caused the hangup. While Task Manager works fine most of the time, it's a limited and fairly inelegant way of solving this problem. Fortunately for everyone concerned, there is a much better alternative, Process Explorer. Originally developed by SysInternals, Process Explorer was so good in fact, Microsoft acquired it and it's now an official Windows utility. So it's not so much an alternative this time, but drawing your attention to something you might otherwise overlook. Process Explorer shows every process that's going on inside a user's PC at any given moment. It displays this information via an expandable tree structure, making it easy to read. Furthermore, if you don't recognize a process, simply right-click it and select Search Online to open a browser window that automatically identifies it. Process Explorer is a more detailed look at what's going on inside the PC, allowing you to diagnose problems and find appropriate solutions easily and rapidly. A fan view. The Windows Photos app is okay if you just want to casually look at some photos. For other photo tasks, it's distressingly basic. But if you need something that will let you view pictures plus do a little editing, file type converting and some tagging and organising, then Earthan View is the photo app you wish the Photos app was. Sure, the interface is a bit clunky and old-fashioned looking and may not be as aesthetically pleasing as other programs, but Earthan View makes up for this in sheer grunting functionality. 
as the name implies, you can use it to just browse your photos, but it also has a full featured photo editor for retouching and can batch convert virtually every image file you may come across. If that wasn't enough for you, you can expand its capabilities via plugins. If FM View seems to be overkill, there are a number of other free photo viewer alternatives for Windows, and I'll put some links to that in the description. Okay, so there are some of the things I always install on a new system and give me everything I need on my Windows 10 or 11 desktop or laptop. Do you have some favourite Windows software alternatives? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now and I'll see you next time.